Yo, what's up, you beautiful people? It's uh, Jack here at 360 Fitness. And kind of an annual tradition, I'm going to tell you some of the fitness lies that I've told you over the years. Uh, so this is kind of a little annual tradition that we've been doing at 360 Fitness. Uh, 360 Fitness is going into its 10th year. I'm going into my 12th year in the fitness industry. And being around that time, you know, that long in the industry, you, you've done a lot of things right, but you've also done a lot of things wrong. And you have a lot of lessons in front of you that you can learn from. Uh, so being a fitness professional, I have a duty and obligation to you guys to get you the best information possible at the right times. So back in the day, you know, I've, I've kind of told some things, you know, based on studies that I have known, based on things that I have learned. But those studies have been changed, been altered, or new findings have come out. So again, it's my duty and obligation to take those studies and then translate it into you guys. So I'm going to go over kind of the five, five more fitness labs I've told over the years. So more or less things that uh, I've said uh, where studies have changed or whether more information has come out or whether there has just been a debunking of sorts, okay? So let's go over it. So from a supplement point of view, um, branched chain amino acids, or also known as BCAAs, are three of the kind of the big boys, the most anabolic, the most growth amino acids um, from our amino acid profile, like proteins. So these are leucine, isoleucine, and valine. And these guys usually come in, you know, a concoction together or whatever else. Heck, at 360 Fitness, we have our own version, our own brand of branch chains. So what I'm really kind of talking about is branch chains aren't as good as, they, as we thought they were. Okay? So branch chains are really, really good at maintaining lean muscle mass. And that's pretty much about it. Maybe reducing lactic acid uh, thresholds just a little bit. Um, but they're not as potent and it's not as good as we once thought. Okay, but most of the time, and especially because when we're doing studies on branch chains, when we're reading studies on branch chains, usually the person is in a calorie deficit plus strength training at the same time in like an advanced, you know, even Olympic athlete kind of capacity. So really what they're doing is they're straining their muscles quite a bit and they're running in a calorie deficit, usually in a, in a low protein environment. So they're not getting enough protein from their diet plus a lot of their you know, digestive protein is going to repair muscles. So when you throw in brass chains, of course the results are going to be good because you're supplementing things you're already into a deficit. It's kind of like if you have zero dollars in your bank account, you throw in ten bucks, boom, it's ten times as much. But it's still not that big of a difference in the bank account, not that big of a deal. Especially, you know, if you are having protein that's adequate and you're strength training with enough recovery, branch chains aren't needed as much. Sure, they are a great supplement, but they're not like for everybody. So people that are either in, you know, they're strength training, you know, five to six days a week for 45 minutes or more each time, or they're in a calorie deficit with low protein intake. Sure, branch chains can go, but they're kind of not for everybody. That's what we found out. So they, I give them kind of a grade of C plus, okay? But the cool thing about branch chains is, is that uh, great thing about it is they're, they're really simple. There's not much to them. Uh, they're easily flavored, no artificial sweeteners, colors, all that fun stuff. So they're a good way to get your water in with no real kind of additives. This is what I do. Now water, another thing that has to do with water, you know, back in the day, back when I first started, like, you know, early 2000s, whatever, all stars doing the studies in the, in the late 90s kind of thing, um, everybody's kind of like, you need to drink four to six liters of water a day. And we're starting to realize that there's a, a massive law of diminishing returns where you're just pissing all the time. Like, it's not that big of a deal. So unless you're really, you know, sweating, and I mean sweating for 60 minutes a day, every single day, and you're, you're 200 pounds plus, you're not really going to need like four to six liters of water a day. For the average Joe that's working out three times a week, 30 minutes, you know, they're having some coffee and tea throughout the day as well. Water, you could probably get away with two to three liters, okay? Do some homework, find out how many ounces you need per body pound, uh, and then kind of give you a, a grasp on that one. But two to three liters a day is totally fine, guys. When I first started, it was like a milk jug of water, and that was four liters, and, and then you have to have more on top of it, and like 21-year-old idiot Jack. <laughs> so so when, you, when you're doing this, guys, uh, two to three liters of water, of pure water a day is totally fine. Um, also, another thing I hear too is that uh, coffee is not really as much of a diuretic as what we once thought. Okay, so people back in the day, they're thinking like, hey, if you have a cup of coffee, you need two cups of water to clear it out and kind of cleanse the caffeine and blah, 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 blah. But most of the time, unless you're having like a crazy nut bag, extra large Starbucks, there's not enough caffeine in there to really dehydrate you. Uh, and then most of the water will act as hydration. So a little 2A in here. Another supplement, guys, another lie I've told you over the years. 
geez, this, these videos are awkward. It's just me kind of confronting. Uh, glutamine. So L-glutamine is another amino acid that's really, really good for uh, uh, gut health, uh, for muscle repair, and immune system. That's all fine and dandy, but it's really when it comes down to it's the same kind of issue as brass chains, only if you're in a calorie deficit and usually in a protein deficit for the most part, okay? So if you are strength training a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, and you're like a very, very active athlete and you're also running in a calorie deficit, two things I really don't suggest that you do in long term um, perpetuity. Glutamine can have some effects, but taking it kind of on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, if you are in a calorie maintenance or if you're just getting your, you know, one gram of protein per body pounds, if you're kind of getting around that, glutamine is in that, and you're usually kind of just putting stuff on top that you might never ever use. Again, it's kind of that law of diminishing returns. So another grade of C plus, okay? Four, this is like 2016 and 2015, Jack. Um, a lot of new studies came out about high intensity interval training, which is HIT. Uh, so it's high intensity interval training, which means like going really, really hard for 15 seconds, for an example, and then resting, active resting for 30 seconds to a minute. More or less if you were going to sprint on the treadmill and then walk for a little bit. Or if you were going to push a sled or as hard as you possibly can and then, you know, rest for a little bit. Or if you were going to do a barbell complex as hard as you can for 15 seconds and then rest for a little bit. Kind of that peaks and troughs of energy expenditure. While the results are still really, really good, the results can actually be detrimental for some people, especially if they have a lot of, you know, if they have, if they're really susceptible to a lot of physical stress that relates into psycho physiological stress, okay? So if somebody is working out too hard in the gym, a lot of times that physical stress, they might not be able to repair and replenish and rejuvenate, and all of a sudden they get really run down. So kind of figure out what kind of person you are, kind of figure out, you know, if really high intensity stressful exercise is good for you, awesome, crush it, do it. Really good for hormones, really good for maintaining muscle mass, really good for reducing the amount of time you need to be in the gym. Plus also at the same time, just like burning of essential fatty acids is awesome on, on HIIT training, but at the same time, it can be detrimental if you do it too much or if you're just not the right person for it. So if you've you know done the HIIT style training and you just feel like a bag of crap, you know, the day after, two days after, you know, if your sleep goes down, your mood goes down, your you know, just energy starts to plummet, then you're probably that uh, physiological person that you know just can't handle the, the high intense stress exercises. So uh, a, a nice list workouts, so low intensity steady states uh, might be a little bit better for you. Um, kind of another thing is too, is that kind of, what kind of yoga person are you? If you do yoga, you know, do you like the hardcore, the strength and the flow and all that fun stuff? Are you a little bit more of a, a relaxed stretch yin yoga, yoga? Kind of that kind of similarity. Uh, but it's just not for everybody. Hit works, but not everybody should do it. Take a look, test it out for a couple times. If it's for you, kick ass. If it's not, scale back. It's not the end of the world. You're not gonna lose out on results. Another thing when it comes down to supplements, guys, creatine is even better than what I've been telling you guys over the years. And I've been telling you guys creatine is fucking awesome over the years. Um, and the cool thing about creatine, creatine is another amino acid side of our body. Uh, but this one, instead of really repairing muscles and rejuvenating muscles, kind of like glutamine and branchings, this guy helps with replenishing the stock of ATP. So adenosine triphosphate, more or less it's a, like a like our spark and our gunpowder when we're contracting our muscles, when we're exploding with energy. It's really kind of like our, our energy between five and 15 seconds of output. So when we're doing a deadlift, we're doing a squat, we're doing a leg press, we're doing a lunge, we're doing high intensity things over a short period of time, ATP is used up, that phosphate and phosphogen is used up and creatine helps replenish that guy. So this is awesome for strength, uh, for strength increase and all that fun stuff. And then more studies are coming out that this guy is even more important than ever before. So make sure your protein intake is nice and high because it's inside, or if you're in a maintenance or in a deficit, supplement with creatine. So even five grams to 20 grams a day, depending on body size and, and, and intensity of, of strength chain, but five to 20 grams. And the cool thing about creatine is that the cheapest, most abundant source of it is usually the best. So creatine monohydrate is just a simple powder. It's, it's um, more or less a, a micronized version of, of L-creatine. So this guy goes into it, it's the cheapest, it's the easiest to consume, you, you digest it in no time, and it actually works the best. So it's awesome on that. Don't worry about uh, creatinine and uh, uh, malates and whatever else. Focus on monohydrate, it's gonna keep your budget a lot better. Stock up on that guy. Uh, with creatine, uh, I really suggest you know, five grams uh, before a workout, so a teaspoon, and then maybe five grams before bed, if you're gonna take it that way, or 10 and 10 to up to 20. A guy my size, about 180 pounds, strength train uh, four or five times a week, 
10 grams is fine. So even if you're rocking five beforehand, if you're a little bit smaller, or if you're a little bit bigger, or strength chain more than I do, maybe shoot for that 20. But it, the cheapest version, it works the best, so that's always awesome, uh, and it's even better than I told you guys before. So there's probably like 15,000 things we can go over, but this video is running around 10 minutes. Uh, so thank you so much for watching, guys. If you guys have any like fitness myths that you're like, is that right or wrong? Or can you clarify these things? Or can you look into this for me, you know, with a little bit more of scientific homework, uh, that kind of stuff? Let me know. Hit me up in the comments and I'll go over it for you uh, and then maybe do a video. Uh, but kind of recap, branch chains are meh. They're not for everybody. They work, but only in your, if you're in a deficit, especially a protein deficit. Uh, water, two to three liters for the average Joe is just fine. Glutamine is not as good as we thought. Uh, most of the studies were on burn victims for muscle regeneration and kind of that um, cellular regeneration, so a lot of the studies were for burn victims and not for typical people. Uh, HIT is not as good for everybody, and creatine is even better. Thumbs up guys, sorry for lying to you, kisses.